Hi guys, it's Fernanda. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how my first week of remote teaching, remote learning went because I literally just finished up. So I know I'm wearing the same sweatshirt that I was wearing in one of my previous videos, but I literally just changed because I got done teaching. I wanted to change and do something more comfortable. So this is my favorite sweatshirt, so that's why I put it on. All right, so I have some notes here on my computer and um, I kind of typed up day by day, like how I felt and what went well, what didn't, so I could share that with you. All right, so I'm actually starting with Sunday because Sunday I had my class's very first Zoom meeting and there was, and it was not for teaching, it was mostly for the students to get familiar with the platform as well as for me so we can all see what it's going to be like going forward with learning and stuff like that in a class through zoom so i had my first zoom meeting on sunday at 5 p.m and i think i had about 10 students join and they were all super excited to see each other we talked for about 10 to 15 minutes and then we ended the meeting as soon as the meeting ended i texted one of my teammates and i was telling her like oh my gosh this is gonna be so much harder than i thought and i was kind of just getting overwhelmed because in a regular classroom setting like you can kind of control the noise level but through zoom you can always mute them that's definitely an option but kids are super excited to see each other and they're just kind of talking over one another trying to have conversations with their friends and i don't even know it was just a little overwhelming but i'm so glad that i did that the day before i actually started remote teaching because that kind of prepared me for monday all right so for monday i actually vlogged that day and i'll have it linked down below if you haven't watched it i actually just posted it. So for this day, I taught a phonemic awareness lesson and a phonics lesson on Zoom. And then I also filmed a read aloud and my writing lesson for YouTube. And um, I had like a math paper review. The meeting overall went really well. It went better than I anticipated based on how I was feeling the night before. Um, it went pretty well. I had students participating. I they were engaged and overall I was just pleasantly surprised. Zoom does have an option where you can record the meeting so I did record the meeting and then I uploaded it to YouTube as an unlisted video to share with the families that weren't able to join the Zoom meeting live. So that worked out really well. I filmed, edited, and um, uploaded the writing lesson and the read aloud that Monday morning and <clears throat> and that was definitely a lot of work to get done before our Zoom meeting started. It was a little bit stressful but I got it done. One thing that I anticipated but also threw me off guard at the same time was all the parent messages I was getting and I know I'm not the only one. I know this was happening to all the, all the teachers that I work with. Um, just parents asking lots of questions regarding regarding different assignments, how to access things, just they just needing guidance and help and clarification with certain things. So I was literally on my phone the whole the whole day, basically. I also had an afternoon check-in scheduled with my students at two um, in the afternoon, just to kind of check in with them and see how their how their assignments were going, if they had any questions, if they have any questions regarding the assignments. Um, and overall, just for them to see their peers again, this is more like a socialized kind of talk things out kind of kind of time. Um, so that was really fun because it just happened that I was at school because I had to go and pick up a laptop to use for the next day. So um, our aides are still working because we only have three. Um, so they were getting packets ready and um, organizing stuff and just other things. It just happened that when it was time for that afternoon check-in, I was at school. So the kids were able to see some of the aides and vice versa and they were really excited about it. I ended off Monday with prepping for the next day. This week I literally prepped day by day. So I prepped Monday night for Tuesday, Tuesday night for Wednesday and so on and so forth just because this week was all about really figuring out what works best for my students. So I was able to just make all the CESA assignments the night before and have them uploaded for the next morning. Tuesday. Tuesday was definitely the lowest of my week. Tuesday was definitely not the best day. Tuesday, in all honesty, totally sucked. Um, at least for me. So as I mentioned before, I, I went to school to pick up a laptop, even though I have a computer at home. And the reason for that is because my husband is also working from home and he was going to start working from home on Tuesday. Um, 
and he needs like specific programs home computer already has installed so it's not like he can use any computer or any device basically um so that's why he's using our home computer so i'm so i was going to use the school laptop that i was able to borrow um so Tuesday morning, I woke, up, I woke up extra early because, again, I had to film, edit, upload my read aloud and my writing lesson, and that did not happen. The reason for that is because the laptop that I was given was so incredibly slow, and it was so incredibly slow that I was literally crying by like 7.30 a.m. Um, it took about... 10 minutes to even turn on it because it kept updating and updating and updating or freezing i don't even know it took 10 minutes to just get to like the the username and password page finally when i was able to log in um it still took a while to start up the entire computer and then once i did the internet was slow the internet browser was slow um but i was able to get it on before my Zoom meeting, but it took so long that I was not able to um, film my read aloud or my writing lesson. And even if I was able to film and film my read aloud and my writing lesson, I don't think I would have been able to edit the video on that laptop. Because first of all, I didn't have an editing program, and then second of all, I don't think it would have, I don't think it would have been able to handle the size of the video of the files. So when I finally got the laptop to be on, it was kind of running okay. So I already had a game plan, right? So my game plan was to host a Zoom meeting from the laptop and then share my screen for my PowerPoints that I used for my lessons on my iPad. Once the Zoom meeting was starting, I was having trouble getting Zoom even started or up and running. Um, on Zoom, when you have people waiting for the meeting to start, there's like a waiting room feature that you can enable that you can enable and I had it enabled. So I could see who was trying to join the meeting and I kept trying to admit them into the meeting. And when I kept trying to admit them into the meeting, it just wouldn't do anything. So I kept pressing it more, but then it kept showing that they were admitted, but they kept being in the waiting room. And eventually I had like 20 of each kid in the meeting because it just wasn't working. Um, finally, when it was working and I still had multiple of the same student in the meeting, we were just gonna roll with it. Um, and as soon as I was, as soon as I was gonna share my screen and not my iPad screen, but like my computer screen, it just crashed and would not let me go back in. Um, I decided to just run the meeting through my iPad. The reason why I didn't initially run the meeting through my iPad is because I could not figure out how, how to have a meeting recorded while using Zoom with my iPad. But that was my that was my only choice at this time, so I just ran it through my iPad and it was not my favorite, so let me tell you why. So when you run so when you're hosting a meeting through your computer, you can see all the participants on your screen. And you can all you can still see them even if you're sharing your screen. On the iPad, you can see the participants as long as you're not sharing the screen, but as soon as you're sharing your screen, you cannot see them. And I found that very difficult to deal with as a teacher because I was going through my lesson and I wanted to ask questions, but I couldn't really see who was like raising their hand, who was paying attention, who was even there in the frame. I couldn't see anything. So I kept just calling random names, hoping that they were there. So I got through the lesson. It was fine. I was. I told parents I was not able to upload it due to, to, to technical difficulties, that hopefully I would get it figured out in the future, uh, in the near future. I also taught the same version of my whole group lesson in the morning, again, but just in a one-on-one -on -one kind of setting. Um, this became a norm the entire week, which I think is which I think is working really well. I was honestly so discouraged by how this day went, and not necessarily how the teaching went, but all the technology issues that I had, and were really really discouraging because I felt like the I felt like Monday went really well, and then Tuesday just kind of. I just felt like I crashed and burned. So I was determined to figure out a way on how to make things better for Wednesday. So I went ahead and asked if I could just take my desktop computer from my classroom home in hopes that that would be a better option for me. And 
luckily they said I could so me and Alex went over to school real quick just packed it all up in the car and, and then just set it up downstairs on our dining table and that has and that has been the best thing this entire week which in turn made me really hopeful for Wednesday I also forgot to mention that Tuesday I taught a math lesson so I am so this week I did alternate between math and phonics, math, phonics, math, phonics. Next week, I will do something different. I will talk about it at the end of this video. All right, so Wednesday, I had a new setup, which made things go so much. I do personally feel that Wednesday was the best day in regards to teaching, learning, um, how smooth things went. Just overall, it was a really, really good day. This is also the day that I figured out how to use um, Zoom and then cast my screen with my iPad, and at the same time, use good notes i don't know why i hadn't thought about this before i use i used to use good notes all the time but now alex uses the ipad because i kind of didn't want to use it anymore but now i'm kind of feeling like i'm going to take the ipad back because it was literally a game changer for remote teaching i was able to zoom in to what i wanted kids to to focus on i was able to write on it i was able to highlight things this came in handy this came so handy when we were reading our story so we were able to kind of like take turns reading and i was able to highlight what the, what i wanted them to to read it was just a really real like i'm telling you it was just a game changer i have if you follow me on instagram you may have seen my little quick instagram story tutorial on how to do it um, i'll have my instagram link down below and i have it saved on my highlights reel and it's just called um zoom plus good notes i also do plan on uploading it here on youtube just in case you don't have an instagram but yeah wednesday just went so much better i just loved wednesday all right thursday thursday i taught a math lesson thursday i felt really prepared and i and because wednesday had gone so well and i had the same setup from there on going forward i thought thursday was gonna be pretty much the same i was wrong it wasn't bad nothing crashed um but there was only one thing that was kind of off and that was another student's internet connection um there was about a 10 second delay on the student's end so whenever i would be teaching if i would say like okay so and so what rhymes with yellow and i would look at this person and there was they they wouldn't say anything so i would wait literally like 10 15 seconds and they still wouldn't say anything so i'd move on to a different student and then in the middle of another student answering, the first student would answer on top of them because they had just heard what I told them. Does that make sense? So there was a huge delay through the entirety of the lesson. And that was just kind of difficult to deal with because I knew that that student wanted to answer questions, that student wanted to ask questions, but I couldn't figure out how to help her with it. And I know that Zoom has a chat feature, but I feel like that would take even longer for a first grader to even type out their question. Does that make sense? This day is also the day that I started using the mute feature because of that delay and because of other things that were going on in my Zoom meeting. But then other students would think that something was wrong with their microphone and that wasn't the case. So I need to explain to my students that if I mute them, it's not because they're in trouble, it's not because you know of anything that they did wrong or anything that's wrong with their computer or tablet or phone, whatever. It's mostly like the background noise because I can hear everybody's background noise. So if a parent is on the phone um, making an appointment, I can hear it. If another, if a parent or a sibling in the same room is watching TV, we can all hear it. So I need to explain to my students that I need, that that's what I'm using the mute button for. I forgot to mention that sometime during the week I had a parent ask if they could get access to the worksheets um, ahead of time and I said yes but here was a problem um, I am pulling I'm still I feel like I don't know if this is the case or not in my head it might not be the case at all but in my head I feel like parents think getting access to the worksheets is just a matter of like sending a file over and here you go that's it but um, I pull worksheets from so many different resources, like they're not all the same resource. So I have to find the, the folder or the file for each that each worksheet is under, scroll through, um, delete all the other ones that are not, that don't have anything to do with it. I don't know, it's just very time consuming. So I told the parent that I will have all the worksheets for next week ready ahead of time but that I couldn't get it done this week because I was literally doing day by day because I didn't know what was gonna work and what wasn't gonna work. 
Thursday, I also sent out a poll using Outlook Forms, which is the equivalent to Google Forms. And I had a few questions. I actually have it right here so I can tell you what I asked. So I asked for the student's name. Um, I asked how they thought this first week of online learning went. Um, and I asked them to rate it out of five. So five being the best, zero being the suckiest. Um, number three was, was your student able to access student materials? Number four was asking if the time frame that we're doing works for them. Number five was if the time frame doesn't work for them, what would work for them? And number six was how can I as a teacher make this experience better for your child? Or how can I further support your child? Um, I only had six responses. Well, overall, they were pretty positive and appreciative. The only thing that was suggested was to have the worksheets available ahead of time so parents could print them at home or at work or something like that, which, which I completely understand. All right, so Friday, so that's today. Um, this day was the day that I had the most students show up to our Zoom meeting. So um, now that being said, I had the most students I had this whole week and that proved to be difficult. <laughs> when, more, when there's more students, there's more background noise. When there's more background noise, it's kind of hard to hear everybody else. And I'm pretty sure it's, pretty, it's harder for them to hear me. So overall, the lesson went, overall, the lesson went okay. It was a phonics lesson. In my opinion, it wasn't up to how well Wednesday went, but it wasn't nearly as bad as Tuesday. So it was it was fine. Throughout this entire week, I've been trying to keep track of what students have completed. So did they come to a Zoom meeting? Um, did they complete all their assignments? So I have this tracker sheet that I made that's right here. Um, if you're interested in it, I can definitely make a blank one that you can use on your own. I don't know, let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. And on top of keeping track of assignments, I've also been giving out dojo points when students participate and stuff like that. So dojo points vary from like one to five. Um, in my regular class, in, a, in the classroom in a regular day, I would give out golden tickets and then they can use your golden tickets for to earn playtime or prize box and stuff like that. So I wanted to come up with a way that that where I would still have almost like an incentive system, a behavior management system, and I came up with dojo points. So we have a digital prize box and by that I mean we have different prizes that they can redeem their points for. Class Dojo has a cool feature where they can redeem points. So if they buy a prize, it subtracts a it subtracts points from what they already have so you don't have to keep deleting them yourself manually so that's pretty cool um so some of the prizes that i have is bring a teddy to bring a teddy bear or a doll to a zoom meeting as long as it's as long as it's not a super huge distraction another one is pick a go noodle for us to do during our afternoon check-ins another one is a postcard for me um which i kind of talked about in my uh in my in my last video um, another one is show and tell. Show and tell is a huge one. And if they pick that one, they get to do it during our afternoon check-in. And then another one, and then I have skip one seesaw assignment. And then the last one is skip two seesaw assignments. So they all vary from, they all vary in ranges of how many points are each worth. For So during our afternoon check-in, they all redeem their points for something. And they also have the choice to save their points for next week. So I had a few students that did that. Before our Zoom meeting this morning, I worked really, really hard on getting all the worksheets for next week ready in a PDF file. So, And I really wanted to do it before our Zoom meeting because I know a lot of parents work and they wanted to print the worksheets at, at work. And um, so I wanted to make sure that the, that, that was posted before like 5. When I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people get out of 5. I don't know. But hopefully parents saw those. My, I also emailed them to my aide so she can make card copies in case a parent wants to come by and pick them up. But if not, see, doing them online on Seesaw is totally okay too. So all in all, this has been a ton of work. A lot more work than I anticipated. I feel like if I hadn't prepped for this week, last week, and just trying to figure out the structure of things, this week would have been so overwhelming. Last week, we didn't teach online because it was our spring break. So technically, I still worked all throughout my spring break um, to get ready for this week. And I'm so and I'm glad I did because 
I was able, it wasn't as stressful as I think it could have been. It was still stressful, but not as stressful. I keep feeling like I am doing so much work my entire day, like literally from 7 a.m. all the way to 10 p.m. is consumed by all this remote teaching, remote learning and prepping for it and actually doing it and checking work and, and communicating with parents. But I feel like I don't have a lot to show for it, right? So I, I feel as if, I cannot feel like an iceberg, right? So I feel, I feel like people only see this much of all the work I'm doing because I I don't know I feel like it sounds pretty easy to just post three worksheets a day on seesaw and then go on and then go on zoom and teach for a few hours but everything that goes into that is all of these things like so much so much more than just this maybe I'm wrong maybe parents don't think that way I don't know but that's just how I feel and I'm hoping that I'm wrong yeah it's been so 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 much work I'm hoping that as the weeks go by, it, I and I get the hang of things, and I this will the workload would minimize a little bit, not more from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. So yeah, that's that's it. That's pretty much how my week went. Now now that I've now that I've experienced this entire week, um, I think I'm gonna change things up a little bit starting next week. Hopefully, I can do it. So here are a few changes that I want to implement next week. So instead of alternating between math and phonics every day, I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna teach. Phonics on Monday, math on Tuesday, science or social studies on Wednesday, and then math on Thursday, and then phonics on Friday. And then writing will still be going on as a video all of those days. I'm hoping to do this to just kind of hit more content areas and have a more well-rounded learning experience. I don't know. Another thing that I want to do now that I have more students showing up to the zoom meetings and i probably will have more next week because my school is giving out is lending out chromebooks i want to have learning groups so i instead of meeting at 10 a.m with everybody i want to meet with one group with a few students at nine a few students at 10 and a few students at noon because i have a one-on-one -on -one at 11. i put up a senate i put up a sign up genius I put up a sign up genius so parents can sign up for a time slot and those are pretty much the only changes I'm making for next week. So that is it for today's video and if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what your highs and your, what your high of this week was and your low of this week was. If you are teaching remotely, I would love to know. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video.